Hello everybody, in this video we are going to cover an integration test. And specifically what we will be testing are these two components and how they interact with one another. So what we're going to be testing is, hey, when I type something and press add in this input component, I should see that same exact value rendered in this list component. And that is what we are going to be testing. And that is an integration test because we're testing how two components, two or more components interact with one another. Now, how do we set up an integration test? Well, very easy, very similarly to how we have been setting up unit tests, except we are going to be testing the parent component that houses the child components that are interacting with one another. And in that case, it is the to-do component. And over here we have the add input component and over here we have the uh, to-do list component. So let me just do a quick save because I just saw a failing test and i surprised that I see that. I, uh, I'm not sure why that is actually. I think it's because it thinks that there's a test directory in there and there isn't. So let me just go ahead and just rerun this and I think it should be fine. Okay, cool. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just rerun it and just double check, every test should pass. Okay, cool. So this is what we are going to test. So now let's go ahead inside of the to-do component and let's add a test directory. And then in here, we're going to create a to-do.test.js. And in here, let's just copy the basic template. So let's go over here and let's change this to the to-do component. Let's also change this to the to-do component. Let's change the describe to the to-do component that we're testing. And then over here, we're not gonna have any props and we're gonna change this to to-do. So right now I'm just going to omit everything inside of the test block and this should pass because if there's nothing inside of it and no exception was thrown, it is going to pass. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is we want to test something. So let's go ahead and test if I type something, press add, I should see it over here. So let's go about doing that right now. So the first thing that we want to do, of course, is to render this to do. So that is what we want to do. Now this is going to be problematic and let's just save this and see why it's going to be problematic because this is going to throw an error. Now, what is the error? Well, it's a very similar error. Hey, we are using a link outside of browser router. Now, you might go to this component and notice, well, we're not really using link in this component. But notice we are using the to-do list component. And inside of the to-do list component, we have the to-do footer. And that's using the link. And so we actually can't have this link outside of the browser router. So very similarly, what we can do is go to our test, Let's just close these off. So we can just go to our test and this is a very easy fix. We can just do const, call this mock to do. These are the mock to do components. And this is just a function based component and it is going to return and it's going to return browser router. Notice it auto imported, it's a little trick. And then you can do to do. And this is not gonna take in any props, so that's fine. You don't have to pass in any props. Simply now, all you have to do is this. And this should pass now. Now we're not really asserting anything other than we can render this component and that's huh, not the most useful thing in the world. So let's go ahead and let's just do the typing, adding, and then asserting that, hey, this, is, uh, this exists in our uh, list. So the first thing, of course, that we have to do is to get our elements. So let's do const input element, oops, can't type today, input element, and that is going to be equal to screen, and let's just get by placeholder text, which is what we used last time. So over here, I like to use regular expressions, so we'll just say, we'll just say add a new task here, dot, dot, dot. And then let's also get our button element, so const button, element and we can say screen dot let's get by role and let's just say button and let's also provide the text inside of the button which is going to be the name and over here we're going to say add 
Okay, cool. That is fine. So now we're going to do what we've done before. So let's go ahead and let's fire an event. I don't believe I have that imported. So let's go ahead and just import that in. Fire event. So fire event, the first event I'm going to fire is a change event. And over here, we're going to change the input element. And then we are going to change its target and then value. So we change the target value and we're going to change the target value to um, let's say go grocery shopping. And now what we want to do is we want to fire another event. So we want to fire an event dot click. And once we fire this click event, we want to specify what we want to click. Well, we want to click the button. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to get this element over here. So we expect that, let me just go ahead and refresh this. We expect if I say go grocery shopping, all right, we should expect that this text is somewhere in here in this list. So let's actually go to the to do. Let's go to the list. So you can control click on the component. And then you can see over here that we have all of the to do's and we're mapping over them. And we have, oops, we have all the to do's we're mapping over them and we're rendering a div with the list. So the to do dot task. So what we can do is something like this. So now what we can do is const div element is equal to, and the div element is going to be screen dot, let's just say get by text. Now, probably not a good idea to put text in a div element, but whatever, that's what I did. So let's do get by text. And then let's uh, do a regular expression. Again, I prefer regular expressions over just a string. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say go grocery shopping. So that is not working because I'm using the wrong back ticks. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we get that. All right, everything is fine. And at the end of the day, this is to a certain degree an assertion because if, if, if uh, uh, it fails, then it's going to throw an error. But let's just ensure that um, everything is working all good. So now what we can do is we can assert, we can expect that the div element is, hey, it's going to be in the document. So to be, to be, I believe, I should forget, to be in the document. There we go. All right. So now let's just, I guess, get rid of these ones. So if we were to call this, this test should, and this is, okay, this is just a warning. I forgot to put the key prop and you can actually fix this by going here and uh, probably not best practice, but you can use the index as the key. So you can refresh that. And then we shouldn't get that warning anymore. And you can see all of our tests pass. All right, cool. And this was an integration test because now we are testing how this component interacts with this component. So now let's test that we are able to add multiple. So we're able to add another thing, maybe pet my cat. And that should be rendered accordingly over here. And if I were to add, um, I don't know, uh, clean my hands, I don't know why that would be to do, but clean my hands. Well, I can add that over here. Okay, cool. And we should basically test that, hey, we get all of these things. And maybe it might be a good idea to test that, hey, we get three elements and the length of those elements are three. So maybe we get uh, uh, three elements. And so what we can do now is actually use the get all by. And let's actually do that right now. So let's copy this. And let's go ahead and let's do very similar thing. So we're going to get the input element, get the button. We're going to change the input element. Then we're going to click. And then we're going to go ahead and change the input element again and then click on the button. Because remember, we have to change it because once we click on the button, the input element clears. And then we can do another one. Let's say three of them. Now, notice that this is very, very repetitive code probably not best practice. So what we could do is just create a function called const add to do and or add task, let's call it. And 
uh, here, this is going to take in an array of tasks. And so now what we can do is, well, let's find the input element and let's find the uh, uh, button element. So let's find those right away because we're going to be using them. And then what we can do is we can do tasks dot for each. So we can iterate through each task. And then for each task, what we'll do is we'll basically trigger these two events. We'll, so we'll fire these two events. So we're gonna fire the change event. And in here, this is going to be the task. And then we're going to click on the button. So now what we can do is for this test, instead of having all of this boilerplate, what we can do is just add task and just say, go grocery shopping, go grocery shopping. And similarly here, instead of having all of this stuff, you can just get rid of all that and then just have an array of, let's say, pet my cat and then wash my hands. Very important to do, but I really don't see why this would be in a to do, but whatever, we'll just leave it there. And so now what we want to do is we want to get all of these elements. We want to assert that we have three elements in here. So now instead of using get by text, we can say get all by, and then we're not gonna want to get all of them by the text. We're gonna want to get all of them by, I don't know, maybe their elements, something that they have in common. Because right now they're going to have different text. This might be a good time to actually utilize a UUID. So if you go over here inside of the element, maybe this is a good time to actually say that, hey, data test ID, and then we can say, uh, we can say uh, container uh, or, 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 or task container, something like that, task container. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and save this. And then what we can do is go here and we can get all by, let's just do by test ID. So we can go ahead and save this. So over here we have task container. And then remember, this is going to be an array. It's not going to be an element. It's going to be an array of elements. So here we can say dot length. And then over here, we can assert that we expect the div dot length or let's say div elements, because it's going to be multiple elements to be three. So this is a good assertion and it should pass. And it does. So now let's add just a few more tests to this test file. And what I want to do is test that when I click on a particular item, these styles changes. Now, initially, I want to test that these styles are like this. There is no underline and the color is not more grayed out. So I want to test that initially, once I add it, these styles stay like this. So what's causing these styles to become underlined? Well, if we go to the to-do list, what we can do here is go to those elements and we can see here that we have a class. And over here, we have the to-do item class. But over here, we have a dynamic class that we only render when the to-do is completed. And this is called to-do item active. And if we go to the CSS, you can see that the to-do uh, item active, it has text decoration of line through and then a color of gray. So what we can do is we can assert that the class name is not present, to do item active is not present when we initially render the to do item. So let's go ahead and assert that. So let's go to our test file. I'm just gonna quickly copy this test, paste that in, and I'm going to change the description, of course. So we're gonna say here that uh, we should probably have changed the description of this as well. So let's just change the description of this to um, should render multiple elements. So should render multiple elements or elements or items, div items, or you know, we'll just say items for that matter. And then for this, we're going to change the description to task should not have completed class when initially rendered. 
So they shouldn't have the completed uh, 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 class when they're initially rendered. So let me just quickly fix the typo here. And so now let's just uh, work with one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pass in go grocery shopping. And let's just get that one element. So we're going to go ahead and just get that one element because we're only just working with one element. And what we want to do is we want to click on that element so we can go ahead and fire a click event. Or actually, we don't want to uh, click on even uh, on that element. We actually just want to assert that, hey, that the class is not there. So let's actually just do that assertion. So we actually have no events here. So now what we want to do is we want to say div element. So this is the div element. And then we can say dot dot to have class. And then we're going to say it has the class of to do item active. Now this is going to fail. But now what we can basically do is say, hey, it should not have this class. And so we can say should not dot to have class of to do item active. So we can save this and it passes. Now let's do an assertion for when we click on that element, then it should have this class. So this is a very easy one. Let's just copy and paste the test. Let's just change the description. So we'll say task should have, I'm going to say should have completed class when clicked. So now we want to click on it. So this is when we will fire an event. So dot click, and then we're going to click on the div element, and then we should have. So we're going to get rid of that not, and then we're going to save it and that should pass as well. And that is pretty much it. We have written our integration test and we have pretty much tested this entire flow for this page. Now, if you want to go above and beyond, maybe you can add a delete feature, a clear all feature and test those as well if you want to learn. Now in the next section, we're gonna be testing the followers page, which is a very, very simple page but it is asynchronous. So this is asynchronous. And you can see that the, the elements, they don't render right away. And that can cause a little bit of problems. So we'll get to that in the next section.